When Microsoft first devised the concept known as achievements, the idea was to reward exemplary behaviour in video games, such as heroic feats of excellence or getting out of a chair. <sighs> hey, what's that? You guys tracking my every move now? As time went on, though, a darker side of achievements started to emerge with the arrival of achievements that rewarded players for going out of their way to act like a big dumb jerk. Thankfully for us, we act like big dumb jerks all the time, so at least now we're getting rewarded for it with achievements and also trophies. Here are seven such times we were rewarded for our failures and misdeeds. Enjoy, and beware spoilers for the following games. What have you got? Looks like a drug overdose. Get away from him, Phelps. This is my case. Shut your f mouth. Since when does a bag man work a case? I knew this creep wasn't on the morphine heist. A victim of his own product. Hey, detective! Can we back it off a notch? In LA Noir, you play as Detective Cole Phelps, who solves crimes by going to the crime scene, picking up random objects, and rotating them until someone nearby confesses to the crime. Proximity to the scene, plus the bloodstains, no way is this coincidence. Or if that fails, yelling at people until the piano plays the You Got It Right tune. A nosy old hag like you knows everything about the people who live under her roof. Where did she go? But those weren't the only things you had to do in L.A. Noir. You also had to transport yourself to and from crime scenes by driving the mean streets of Los Angeles in a series of period-appropriate cars. If you played anything like the way we did, this was a great opportunity to mess with your partner. It was also a great opportunity to earn the achievement called Public Menace, in which gritty, story-driven detective game L.A. Noir asks you to go absolutely buck-wild on downtown Los Angeles and, in a single mission, cause $47,000 worth of damage. Went to college at Stanford. This is no small ask. $47,000 back then in 1947 would be worth over half a million dollars in today's money. And so, to rack up this much property damage, you're going to need to act like even more of a jerk than usual, wrecking expensive cars, smashing into public property, and, of course, almost killing pedestrians. Although the game only rates that as $100 worth of damage, so it's barely worth bothering. Slow down before someone gets hurt! I said barely worth bothering, I didn't say not worth bothering. Also, there's no way of actually tracking your progress towards this achievement in-game, and the achievement won't pop until the end of the case, so really, you're going to have to absolutely destroy downtown Los Angeles to be sure of unlocking it. Right, and now to investigate that purse snatching. I'm too good to this city. Here we are, Ms. Yu. Mind the glass on the way out. Good luck to you. Truly, the people of Prey's alternative timeline live in a futuristic wonderland, what with their advanced space stations, taking helicopters to work, and spacious apartments that they don't have to share with a roommate who never cleans out the rice cooker after they use it. No, Rachel, I won't let it go. Like I say, this is a perfect society, as long as you don't mind being murdered by the occasional nightmare alien monster. Still better than sharing a rice cooker. Yet more evidence, as if it's needed, that Talos 1 is a high-tech utopia is the way scientists have perfected environmentally friendly recycling technology. See, they've harnessed the powerful Reyes field theory to create material recycler machines that take unwanted objects and break them down at a molecular level to transform junk into actually useful resources. <laughs> Even better than that, they've miniaturised that technology into a single-use handheld format, known as a recycler charge. When thrown, these steampunk pokeballs create a teeny-weeny gravitational singularity that gobbles up whatever items are within range and spits out chunks of crafting materials. In this way, nothing is wasted, not even the corpses left behind by the nightmare alien monsters, which can be recycled into useful resources. It's what they would have wanted. It's certainly what I wanted.
Of course, a grenade that makes a black hole is potentially as dangerous as a grenade that makes a black hole. But you are a qualified science doer with degrees and stuff, and there's no way you'd be so dumb as to let yourself get sucked into a quantum singularity and ripped apart into your component molecules, she said, wrongly. Uh, oops. At least, if you do muck up and accidentally recycle yourself into a clump of organic matter, the clump of organic matter will receive an achievement called intrinsic value and 10 gamer points by way of compensation for the embarrassing self-recycling snafu. Then, probably, a smarter, better scientist will come along and use your clump of organic matter to, I don't know, invent a clean, renewable biofuel. Again, nothing is wasted. Except you. You're dead. Where are you? I'm in the Nomad. Where else? I'll be watching you through the Mark II. Mm, wish I was good with gadgets. Hey, I'll be with you in spirit. The debate about video games as art lumbers on, but if there's one creator in the video game space who has come close to achieving the mainstream respect and critical acclaim afforded to the most significant auteur filmmakers, it's the visionary game director behind the Metal Gear series, Hideo Kojima. With that in mind, I'm now going to talk about an achievement in Metal Gear Solid 4 where you break off a statue's penis. What took you so long? At the very start of Metal Gear Solid 4, Snake is in the Middle East, heading to meet Otacon in an area called the Red Zone. Of course, a covert ops specialist like Solid Snake is always looking for the perfect place to hide. Like this statue plinth, for instance, with a spot for a missing third statue. All that remains is to adopt a convincing, elegant, artistically appropriate statue pose. Or that. That works too. At this point you could jump down and carry on with your incredibly important mission, or you could goof around with this statue's junk because it's funny. But do it too many times and that junk snaps off. The bad news is you've ruined what is no doubt a centuries old treasure. The good news is that you, the vandalising jerk, are awarded a bronze trophy for your art crime. This is a knob gag previously seen in lowbrow comedy movie The Naked Gun, and yet put it in a video game and you get a BAFTA fellowship. I'm just saying. Some of the achievements in this list could be accomplished by being a legitimate dummy, whereas others require you to be a deliberately reckless jerk while you go about your jerk business. In Surgeon Simulator, the achievement known as Hammer Time could technically land in either camp, but only if you are genuinely the worst, unluckiest, least dexterous surgeon to ever live and you have vowed for some reason to only ever operate with a hammer. This achievement is awarded for losing a total of 50,000 millilitres of blood from your victims, I mean patients, with the hammer as your weapon, I mean precision surgical instrument. For those unacquainted with the metric system or the typical volume of blood in what surgeons call the human body, 50,000 millilitres is all the blood inside nine whole human people. So to crack this achievement you'll need to apply your hammer to several patients just to let out enough blood. I'm no doctor, but surely Hippocrates had something to say about not smashing your patients with a hammer to get a chivo. Then again, I don't know, I don't speak ancient Greek. To be quite honest, if the authorities didn't revoke your medical license after you hammered all the blood out of your first patient, it's sort of on them. Ninas! <laughs> I really screwed up. The android Yorha number 9 Type S is one of the main characters in melancholy action RPG Near Automata. 9S, as he's known to his friends, is a kind of overly earnest, blindfolded robot modelled after a 1940s schoolboy. Looks like it's time. 
This being a game with weighty philosophical themes, the android protagonists are naturally treated with the utmost solemnity and respect, and oh, oh wait though, I did just remember there's an achievement for looking up 2B's dress 10 times. It's not only skirt wearing 2B on the receiving end of dubiously heroic achievements, there's also an achievement by the name of Not That I Mind, which rewards you for, I quote, one hour played with 9S in a certain state. You might well be wondering what certain state to which the description is referring. Could it be a state of very low health? A state of emotional distress? Perhaps the game is tracking your location and they mean the state of Idaho. The answer, in fact, is none of the above, because the certain state to which the game is referring is pantsless. You see, in Nier Automata, the androids are equipped with a self-destruct feature. If you were to activate this self-destruct on 9S, you would discover that it actually doesn't destruct his self, but it does destruct his shorts. Sure, 9S has lost a lot of health, but only his legwear has been fully destroyed, revealing his android underpants. If you were feeling guilty about nearly murdering your robot schoolboy avatar and costing him a pair of shorts, you could replace them almost immediately, so at least he doesn't have to spend too long running around pantsless. <laughs> If you're terrible though, you can maintain his pantslessness for a full Earth hour, at which point the developers will outright straight up condone your actions by presenting you with a 15G achievement or a bronze trophy. Now that I think about it, Nero Automata, you probably should mind a bit. You have five minutes to cut off the last section of one of your fingers in front of the camera. If you succeed, you will get your reward. Not many people know this, but the working title for Heavy Rain was Ethan Mars Suffering Simulator 2010, on account of all the suffering endured by protagonist Ethan Mars. This is, after all, a game in which Ethan loses one of his sons in a car accident, his other son in a kidnapping, and his finger when he has to cut it off on camera, like it's the grimmest TikTok challenge of all time. And in all of that misery, Ethan only gets it on with one other protagonist on one occasion, and that's with his finger freshly cut off, which it's got to be a mood killer, even if you can still undo a bra. Therefore, this unsettling scene in a crowded train station only ranks somewhere in the middle of Ethan's most harrowing experiences in heavy rain. I can't, can't take crowds, just can't handle it. In this sequence, Ethan has a panic attack brought on by the crowded station. Then he enters a kind of traumatic flashback to the time his son wandered off and was hit by a car. You know, the kid with the red balloon? What was his name? Jason! Right, yes. In this spooky hallucination, Ethan suddenly finds himself surrounded by frozen passers-by. These living statues would be freaky enough if they didn't also go down like a sack of spuds whenever you accidentally brush up against them. I say accidentally brush up against them, which might be the case if you're sincerely trying to steer poor desperate Ethan after his son, but if you're out to bag the PlayStation trophy named Agrophobia, then more likely you're deliberately bashing Ethan into these folks with purpose and gusto, because you have to knock down at least 50 of the innocent bystanders to score the trophy. In the fiction of the game, Ethan might be frantically trying to reach the vision of his dead son, but you, meanwhile, are frantically trying to topple 50 frozen commuters with your weird, not very good, new superpower. We have to assume all this aggressive shoulder barging only took place in Ethan's troubled mind, because when he emerges from the hallucination, there aren't 50 people giving him the stink eye. So chalk up one bit of good news for Ethan and one sweet bronze trophy for you. That's the depot. You know what you need to do, but keep it quiet. If the alarm goes, I'll have to prove you out. If you know a little bit about me and the way I like to play the video games, you'll know that stealthiness isn't exactly my brand. In fact, I firmly believe stealth is for quiet cowards. Oops, that's a grenade. Sorry, that was me. So I can only imagine the foolishness of attempting the stealthy Payday 2 achievement by the name of I have no idea what I'm doing. Keep an eye out for anything you can hustle out of there. The murky water containers are your best bet. For this achievement, you must complete the stealth-focused shadow raid heist in which evading detection is critical, because setting off the alarm will send the whole job sideways. 
Here's the catch. You have to complete the job with a loadout of the supremely unstealthy Vulcan minigun and the HRL-7 rocket launcher. Neither of these weapons is going to help you maintain a low profile because there's nothing mini about the minigun. And the rocket launcher is a rocket launcher, i.e. better for taking out tanks than cameras. Therefore, for this achievement, you have to go about your sneaky heist business without carrying an actually useful gun, like anything with a silencer for instance, and instead stubbornly packing two useless noisy mega weapons. Um, uh, nah, um, I don't, I don't... The fact that you've committed to the sheer bloody-mindedness of lugging around 50 kilos of unusable hardware in the face of common sense, professionalism and regard for your fellow heist crew members is sort of an achievement, I suppose. At least you can skip the gym tonight. Alright, that'll keep Gage sweet. You guys can cast this out now, or stay for war. If you somehow manage to pull off this stealth heist while equipped this ridiculously, then the Chivo is yours. I almost can't believe we did it! Expertly done, gang! Me? Well, I just have too much respect for myself to sneak around carrying all of these bad boys. I don't know what happened! Those were seven achievements we got for being dumb, or a jerk, or a big dumb jerk. We hope you enjoyed this video from Outside Xbox, that's us. If you'd like to see more videos from Outside Xbox, that's us, then there are so many to choose from, but might I recommend you start with this one on screen right now. And if not that, why not check out this video from Outside Extra, our sister channel over here on YouTube. That's Luke and Ellen, who are quite excellent people, if I do say so myself, and I would because they're my friends. Hi Luke. Hi Ellen.